He was born in Havana. And after his family escaped the Castro Revolution, they fled to America to start over with nothing. Life was hard at first, but at the age of eight, his father took him fishing for the first time in the waters of Miami's Biscayne Bay. From that point, the youngster would be consumed with a lifelong fascination with life under the sea. Endlessly curious, the young man would study and befriend the greats of fishing. He worked odd jobs so that he could buy a skiff, and by age 18, he had earned his captain's license. He learned day by day the fundamentals of fishing. He wanted to be the complete angler, with not only the skills and experience, but the knowledge of how life in the sea works. He wanted to be the best. It's not exactly calm as the lake out here. That, all that is, is one huge, huge school of bay. It looks just like another, if you look further down that way, you'll see another piece that looks just like it, and, and that's coral. What they are, they're, they're a combination of uh, what we call sand key pilchers, and also another type of pilcher called a razor belly. I started, you know, going by this island to do some sail fishing out here. And I saw a few birds work, and I went, huh, you know, and I stopped there. Usually it's the birds that cue, cue you. You see pelicans dive, you see pelicans dive, and you go, you know, could be ballyhoo, which I don't use very much, could be glass minnows, which I don't use at all, uh, or it could be these guys, which I use a lot. Jose Wahebe continued to hone his fishing skills as a young man, working a regular job of diving for tropical fish and later training sea mammals at the Miami Seaquarium. He would spend any spare time fishing and guiding in the waters of South Florida. His unique experience helped him to develop as more than a fisherman. He was not one to be limited to the deck of a boat with rod in hand. He knew that fishing could be much more. It could take you all the way into a world of remarkable adventure both mentally and physically. There's been one event, one Spanish fly moment in the course of the, of the shows that probably have, has garnished more you know, emails, responses, memories, whatever, uh, than anything else. And, and that was at a time that I appeared in my underwear on national television. Do you want a free spoon? No, no free spool, just back off the okay. drag. He's off. I, I'm not really sure what it is about okay, just let it the cameramen that they feel the need to perhaps document some of these, you know, less than wonderful moments, uh, but they do. They seem to have an innate knack for focusing perfectly when I seem to be in my, my underwear. Are you for real? Yep. Okay, I can film Robin, but he's still on. He's got it. Holy cow. 
That's dedication. Thank you. Oh, there's a hook. Oh. <laughs> oh. This flew oh. on. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> There's the hook. Thank you for my hook back. You're welcome. Holy cow. Look at that guy, huh? Holy cow. <laughs> that is a beaut, Marsh. Good job. That is a beaut. Congratulations. Thank you for the swimming lessons. You're welcome. Woo! Woo! You deserve to live. To that point, no one had ever seen saltwater fishing brought to life in such a living, breathing way. But the captain of the Spanish fly was just getting started. The life and times of Jose Wahebe were played out on a world stage. Growing up in South Florida, he developed a desire for fishing and the life of the sea that could not be contained in a single country, even in a single hemisphere of the world. Through his endless networking and the worldwide popularity of his television show, he would learn of incredible fishing opportunities around the globe. He was as much an explorer as an angler, and his burning desire to experience it all took him to spectacular places. Everybody was talking about, how about let's get a rod and reel and put a hook and put it down there and get in the boat and make it look like we're catching this huge fish. And I'm like, how can you catch your pets and put a hook in his mouth? Uh, so, you know, then the challenge was like, well, well, we can still have fun with these things. So we decided we were just gonna tie some fish on a, on a rope and see, see what happened. His world travels were about discovery, and not just discovery of other species and fisheries, but to learn other ways of fishing. He was a sponge, so to speak, soaking it all up. But oftentimes his incredible resourcefulness would serve to show anglers in far-flung places a new way to get things done. He was a one-man cultural exchange program. The red bass, which is really a snapper, is a species of fish that, that lives around uh, and feeds around and spawns around coral reef environments. And sometimes the more dramatic the structure, the better. In fact, there's some, some ravines and crevices and, and cuts, if you will, that go through the, through the proper reef that lead from the deep water into the lagoon side that, you know, it's a natural habitat for those fish to live in because they can sit in the crevices, you know, and, and they're an ambush feeder, so they sit in the crevices and look up and as the current flows by and brings bait by, they can kind of rush out of the crevice, boom, grab a bait and rush back into the crevice and, and be safe, which makes for a very dramatic and exciting way to fish for them, but it makes it very tricky to get them out. Yes. Get out of there, yes. get out of there, big that. red bass! Big red bass, get on him, get on him, because he's going to get me in the rocks, he's in the rocks. Get, 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 get on him. Get out of there, baby. Here, I'm gonna get that, get in the water here. I'm just gonna hold this rock tip down here. Mask. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down here. Okay. Get around the motor here. Here's the area. No way. No way, he's got it out, he's got it out. Really? Oh yeah, look at it. Oh my god. It's look a cold trout. Oh, is it? Is it? <laughs> Unbelievable. Look at the size of that bass. Dude. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I have never seen anything like that before in my life. That is unbelievable. Never Dude. seen anything like that. What a shot. Oh, my God. 
Fantastic snapper. Amazing. Look at this, look at the fangs and those things, will you? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's so funny, Brian. I mean, I duck my head down under the last ravine. I'm going, like, where's he going? I mean, I'm sure he's off. And I looked there, and all I could see was was this. His his feet, face yeah. and his teeth, you know? Just looking up at you. Uh-huh. Oh my god. That's a nice one. Look at Bet you never had that happen to you before. <laughs> he's a bit shell-shocked. Never seen someone get undressed while they had a fishing rod in their hand. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, hold on, give me my mask. I'm going in. Yeah. <laughs> Madness. Come on, baby. Oh, you can do it. You can do it. There, there he goes. Go. There he goes. Nice. <laughs> you know, no wonder you got your own TV show, huh? I don't know about that. No way. You know what? You appreciate that, a fish like that, ten times more. Oh, yeah, that's. Fights out in open water. Hey, hey Randall, do you know anybody else? that would do something like that? I have never it's seen that at all. Uh, no. That's what I call a morning. His life's work was all about showing how much life there is in the world and how much there is to discover. He would take us there and let us experience it all. Jose Wahebe could, in the space of half an hour, explain to us how a certain species of fish lives its life, how it fits into its world, then show us the most unique and meaningful way to fish for it. And as if that isn't enough, by the end of the program, we'd have a better understanding of one of the most difficult to explain passions on Earth, why we sport fish. The whole marlin thing is, is an interesting build because you get to your spots, you know, you, you, you've got your lures already picked out, you start putting your lures on, on the things. Carter's got a very specific way that he wants those lures in the wake, you know, it's called the spread where you position your lures. After about three or four hours of that, you know, the boat kind of lulls you in, into this like stupor estate where you, it's hard to keep your, your eyes open. So, you know, and that's really what marlin fishing is all about. A lot of boredom until the bite. There he is, Jose! There he is! There he is. <laughs> yeah! Woo! There he is! Nice <laughs> fish! <laughs> yeah! Now, hold on, let's see a minute. Woo-hoo-hoo! Hey, boys! Yeah! <laughs> Woo! All right. Just slow it down a little bit, Robbie, just a little. All that time, Jose, all you had to come was see us at Crooked Island. <laughs> okay, this is what number? What number? 29. 29, come on, 29's a lucky number. Just right here. Okay, right Turn here. sideways. Stop holding me! Stop holding me! Oh my god, they don't have my hat! Stop holding me! All right, let's put them in the water. Go on. Watch these tangles, Jose. Watch tail. Okay. Yeah. Come ahead, Robbie. This is going nice and easy now. This is going. My 29th marlin. Yeah. Hot. Here we go. One, two, spring. Spin the head Go, ahead. Go, boy! Come on. Catch one of them. Come on. Ah! Harder. If you didn't guess one right there? Yeah. We had a plan for him. What was the plan? I guess the best part of that whole day after we got the blue marlin was uh, getting to baptize Jose. <laughs> It's tradition! 
I knew that if I didn't get him right now, if I gave him a chance to fight, that there was going to be trouble, even with Robbie and I both there. So it was, it was uh, quick and unexpected, and I wasn't sure what he was going to do after it. I don't want to come aboard that boat anymore. Wait, I'm mad at you guys. Wait, you guys, you don't make the boat. That was the last thing on earth I expected. I know that it happens, but I just didn't expect it to happen there. Now you're gonna have a cold day. I'm cold. staying away from you the rest of the day. <laughs> you would be wise to. Hey, it's worth it. It's worth it. It couldn't have been better to catch my first blue marlin with Carter and Robbie in Crooked Island. You know, we've we've been together for a lot of years. We found a lot of cool fisheries here on this island. I've been all over the world, uh, luckily enough to, to fish for, for blue marlin. Never caught one. And it's just ironic that I come back to almost what I call home base to catch it. For all his pioneering and discovery in the world of fishing, the exotic quests and breakthrough adventures, Jose knew quite well that the most satisfying days were oftentimes the simplest, and most basic, in the boat with a friend or a loved one, sharing the magic moments, the peace and satisfaction that the water provides. I think the greatest gift that a parent can give to their child is the appreciation for the things that they believe in. And I believe in the outdoors, and I believe in catch and release fishing, and I, I believe in just kind of enjoying the ocean and all its uh, elements. And Chrissy has been going out on the boat since she was a tiny little infant. I was out on the boat with him when I was very young. Mom and Dad brought me out on the boat when I was probably two weeks old was the first time. We lived right on the water, right on the flats, and uh, Big Pine Key. So we just take the boat out right there and go out on the water. And uh, you know, we've spent time over the years, uh, you know, going to different places in the world and going fishing. Remember, if he surges, honey, just let him go. And I put a little more bend in the rod, so that way you got a little cushion. You know, instead of pointing it right at it, you got a little cushion. I love this. This is one of the few times you'll do what I say. <laughs> and going to different places here at home and going fishing. And, and for me, it's not about holding the fish at all. When you, when you take your child fishing, it's about you know, that bonding time that you have with them, the chance for you to kind of, through fishing, just kind of show them the things that you believe in and your appreciation for mother nature. The time spent with your child on the water, to me, is less about catching the fish and more about doing this, bonding together. Jose Wahebe was a no compromise type of guy. For him, it was all about the extra effort. No shortcuts, no layups, no sure things. If you had to travel 10,000 miles, submit to any and all hardships, leave all connections to civilization behind, then so be it. Uh, we, have to, we have to go for it. We, you know, we're, we have to go for it. There's no turning back. We also got a chance to see some of the research. <laughs> the sea lion took notice. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. Hey, hey, can you pan over and shoot and shoot West shooting the sea lion? Can you see him? Can you see both of them? <laughs> I mean, it really is funny. It, we're, this is this is this is how we're filming. You know, we're sitting here next to a sea lion. There's about three or four babies down there, down the beach. There's an iguana sitting right there on that rock. I'm looking at a half a dozen crabs down here. I mean, right? That's pretty amazing, y'all. <laughs> I think it's awesome. There's a little baby sleeping right here. Right? I'm yammering away, and there's a little baby sea lion just sleeping over my shoulder. Look, see him down there. A little while ago, you know, there were about four or five of them just sitting down there playing. That's pretty cool now. That's pretty cool. Oh yes, my baby, let me rest my head upon your body. Uh-huh, that's right. You will not say anything. 
you will just lay there quietly. Mm, you make such a nice fluffy pillow for my chin. And he'll sit there all day long. He may be like, he'll maybe go, oh, oh, oh. And maybe look back here a couple times. Uh, uh, I might move, maybe. Uh, I, may, uh, I think I'm gonna move. Maybe, maybe I'll move. Eh, uh, never mind. Jose Wahebe made it look easy, no matter how much hard work was involved. Certainly his passion and knowledge of the sport and the sea are key ingredients but it would be hard to say enough about the kind of person he was. Affable, emotional, funny, and intense. But most important was the generosity of spirit. He wanted nothing to keep for himself. He was more interested in sharing with his audience and his friends. It's a solid fish. And so you, you hook this thing and you're bringing it up and it's just fighting kind of weird. And you know, there was a, all of a sudden, you know, the fish got heavy, really heavy and immovable. Good mm. God, what have we got here? Like this could be a doggy, a GT or a shark. And really, I can't tell you. No, 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 not back that way. Keep the motion, I see a body. Oh dear, can't oh, see dear. if it's a shark. <laughs> it's a doggy! Holy! No way! Look at the That's size of it! Fish. That's a dog, dog tooth tuna! Holy Whoa. moly! That is enormous! You have got to be kidding me, dude! Holy That is moly. huge! That's like 80 kilos! You have got to be kidding me, bro! Look at it! It's enormous! Look at the yellow tail on it! That is huge! That's one of the biggest I've ever seen! That is enormous, Jose. Don't scare me, y'all. <laughs> Just keep doing what you're doing, man. You're going great. Thanks, mate. Here he is. He's coming up. Look at the size of that thing. I thought it was a shark. He was so big. Oh, my Look God. Look at the size of that. No way. <laughs> no way. Fork, 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 fork. That is huge. Mm. That's what you wanted, man. We got him. Holy moly! Oh my god, no Look way! At Look at that! <laughs> Good, we want to try and we release him, him, so we no, him. just put the gaff in the right spot, don't hurt him. Oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> Jose! Holy moly! <laughs> Whoa! Watch out! Down, doggy, down, down. Just don't get me. Sorry. Just, just let him let go. Let go. Don't worry, I'm good. <laughs> Holy moly! Oh my God! Okay, you got it. Good fight. Well done. That is a hell of a fish. Look at the teeth on it. Man, that's got to be that like... That is a gnarly oh. looking, mean ass dog tooth right there, bro. Well, guys, I hate to say we got to get him back in quick so he, he lives. Okay. All right. Oh. Let's get him. Let's get him okay. back in, guys. Let's get him back in, bro. Send him in head first. Okay, ready? Okay, I got the tail. I'm pushing the tail. Ready? Pushing the body. Send him home. Go. Come on, swim, Come on, baby. Right, swim. There he goes. Kick. He's kicking. Come kicking. on, mate. Come on. He's kicking. There he goes. Oh, he's there gone. He goes. There he goes. Woo! Yes! Yes! Great stuff. That was awesome. What a fight. Oh. Man, that's awesome. How cool is that? <laughs> We've just got like a 28 kilo wahoo and like, oh, let's have a quick drop. <laughs> that is out of control. <laughs> oh my god, now, that's like a fish of a lifetime. Well, you know that, that was right? like, awesome. what do you reckon? That had to be like 78, oh, 75 kilos, 70, I reckon. 75, 78 kilos, that was a monster. Yeah. The story of Jose Wahebe has so many fascinating chapters. In many ways, it is the classic American success story. But it's also the story of a man who would have pursued his passion just as fervently if it hadn't rewarded him with a dime. But most important was the generosity of spirit. He wanted nothing to keep for himself. He was more interested in sharing with his audience and his friends.
So how can you top that kind of experience? You know, you're, you're on a trip of a lifetime and you catch, you know, a, a fish of a lifetime and you've caught you know, many of your first fish and you still imagine that there's days to come. Jose Wahebe, a sportsman, a friend, a one-of-a-kind American. So how can we say goodbye to a person like this? The answer is, we never will. Thank you.